And you're listening to the Blue and Gold Report on KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. Our first guest today is Junior Maravik Mamet from the women's tennis team that is ranked 50th in the nation. Maravik, thanks for joining us on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. The team is having a great year so far. You're 8-3. and three. You've knocked off three higher-ranked opponents, uh, number 55 Tulane, number 33 Pepperdine, and number 46 LSU. What's been the key to the team's success this year? Um, well, we've had such great wins, like you said, and quoting our coach, I think a big major key that is different this year is cohesiveness. Um, everyone's on the same page. We understand what we have to do. Um, <clears throat> in order to reach our goals, which are um, win Big West, beat Long Beach State, um, get to the NCAAs, get to the top 16, and then be top 20 in the country. Um, like our coach said, he said we have a great opportunity this year, like a rare one. He coached here for 30 years, and he just said, um, we're going to roll with it because I have a good feeling about this, and as long as we're cohesive and on the same page, we can do it. Now, are you a close team? Is this team pretty I close? I want to say, team? yeah. No? I, we're, we're pretty close. I think, um, you know, last year we uh, really worked on, you know, like a safe, drama-free, trusting environment mm -hmm. where everyone's kind of, um, you know, on the same page, but at the same time really comfortably to each other. Like, we've, I'd like to say we treat ourselves like sisters. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, that's a major part, and we're all, you know, trying to work hard and do our best. Uh, Individually, individually, you're six and five in singles. You're thirteen and five in doubles with partner Sarah Stadfeld, and she's a freshman at Edison High School. You're a junior. Um, how did the partnership get started? Um, well, uh, I kind of got started because well, last year I didn't play with a partner, and I was really bummed out because um, being a junior in college and not being able to play doubles, um, I really wanted to learn how to, you know, incorporate my single skills into doubles. I'm, mm -hmm. You know, I was kind of a newbie, um, but <clears throat> how it started was, you know, Coach Sinus kind of saw the personality of me and Sarah and how we complement each other. Um, me on the court, I'm very intense. I'm almost hyper, as my partner Sarah Stadfeld would say. But um, Sarah Stadfeld, on the other hand, complements me because she's very calm and collected and precise with her shots. So I think we kind of feed off the energy. If I get a little too hyper, she brings me down. But if she's a little too you know, low on energy. I, you you know, amper up a little mm -hmm. bit. Definitely. So that's how it works, I think. Um, is it important for doubles partners to have different styles or similar styles to, to be successful? Um, I want to say it's it's important, at least to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure other teams, you know, on the pro tour, like our brothers and sisters, like the Williams sisters and the Bryan brothers, and they're probably very similar in game style, but um, when it comes to the team, for example, um, we really like to have hitters that are um, complement, so like different game styles. Me, for example, I'm a very good baseliner, mm -hmm. and I will keep the rally going at the back, you know. And then Sarah Sadfeld is a very good attacker at the net. So, you know, I keep the rally going in the back, and then she just picks off volleys and um, aggresses. But then we're able to switch it up if I'm at the net and she's at the baseline. Um, so I think that really helps. How do, how do you decide when Sarah's going to, you know, take a ball away and, you know, at the net? Is that all worked out beforehand because you know who you're playing, or is that something that you you talk about and decide as the match is going on? Um, we talk it well, I think for every doubles team, at least on our team, we really try to take advantage of any, you know, floating ball at the net. So basically in women's tennis, um, or tennis in general, first one to poach is the first one to win the point. Okay. So first one to take that volley, you know, it's, it's a scary thing to take a hard baseline shot and go at a volley, but the first one that does that is usually the one that wins. So we practice, don't be scared, go for the ball, help your partner out, because it's a lot of pressure on the baseline to keep that rally going. Um, and then, yeah, you talk about it. We do plays in order to set up the person at the net. Now, I talked to your teammate, Nikisa, and she says, you don't go to the net enough. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Guilty. <laughs> Is, why, um, why did you develop as a baseline player? What do you like about the baseline as opposed to going to the net? Um, well, first first of all, going to the net is... Uh, like you said, scary. It's scary. Yeah. And you obviously you have to like run up to the net. That's a lot of co like co court to cover. Um, and I obviously, I like being in control of the baseline and like being crafty, opening up the court with my lefty forehand and my angle backhands. But um, 
getting to the net is all about anticipation, seeing that the girl's in trouble, she's going to pop it up, and you take advantage and you're like sneaking in. But I think that I had to learn that perception as I got older. It's kind of like, um, just I'd like waiting for the ball instead of really like anticipating. So I worked on that with Coach Mike. He's really helpful with that. So you, you have started to go to the net a little bit more? Oh, I really have, yeah. Coach Mike, my the year I transferred, he said, well, look, if you want to play, you kind of got to um, work on getting to the net. So, you know, this entire time that I've been here to UCI ever since I transferred, um, has been developing my net game and becoming a more diverse, complex player. So it's really gotten there. Okay. Uh, you you referenced transferring, and I was going to ask you. You transferred from William and Mary. I did. Mm -hmm. um, you know what was life like there, and why did you decide to transfer back to California? Oh, oh well. Um, coming out of high school, I was a, a senior, and I kind of it's kind of hard. I didn't realize you know there's so many places you know in this country you could go to, especially I was getting scholarships. Um, in Virginia, University of Washington, Texas, um, Arizona, but then the main reason why I went there is because William & Mary was a prestigious, um, really old college, like past presidents went there, and the coach really wanted me, and I wanted to experience the East Coast, you know, that's the person I am, you know, when else am I going to be able to go to the East Coast? So <clears throat> I went there, and then I just realized, coming from L.A., born and raised, in the middle of this tiny Williamsburg city. Um, first practice, I just, I just knew I was. I have to go home. <laughs> you didn't feel it at all. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel like I would grow as a person in terms of diversity and just college experience in general. So I called up Coach Mike. Um, I remember I visited him when I was about seventeen. He's actually family friends with me. Okay. And my family. Um, he's a tennis family. My my family's tennis family. And he said, Yeah, you know, I have a spot for you if you want it. So I just hopped on board. And came home. And came to Irvine. <laughs> well, I'm sure, I'm sure Coach Edlis is thrilled that she yeah, came back. Yeah, I was super thrilled, too. <laughs> uh, the women's tennis team is in the midst of a nine-match homestand. You, you're at home all of March. Alex and I were just talking about that. We're so excited that we get to see you all of March. Perfect, yeah. Um, you just beat New Mexico. You've got Long Beach State this Saturday, a big black and blue rivalry match. Long Beach yeah. State, 8-2. and two. They've played two more Big West matches, so they're 4-0. UC Irvine's 2-0 in Big West. Um, talk about the history between UC Irvine and Long Beach State because it's been pretty intense. It it has been pretty intense, and I feel like it's probably in school's history that we're rivals. But in tennis, in general, women's tennis, um, tennis has really uh, moved to recruiting foreigners. Um, I want to say Coach Mike has done a really good job with keeping the players local, local girls. I mean, we have girls from Long uh, Laguna Beach. Um, I'm from LA. Pe the girls mostly on our team are from Southern California. An all American team, except for you know, Francisca, who is German. Um, but Long Beach State is, I want to say, with the exception of maybe two, three players, is all foreign, all Europe. And so I think maybe that's kind of the rivalry. Like, we don't really know these girls when we're younger, and they just come and, you know, try and dominate Big West when it's like, well, we're protecting, you know, the home front. So. Oh, America versus the world? Kind of, yeah, because <laughs> tennis is such an international sport, right. but um, yeah, so that's how we kind of take it. That and we just want to win, put UCI on the top. So. Do you feel the team gets more amped up for Long Beach State more than any other opponent? Oh, definitely. Because yes. you've played in some Big West uh, tournament <coughs> finals the past few years, mm -hmm. um, That's and they've been intense battles. Yes. So talk about how this team um, gears up mentally for Long Beach oh. State, even though it's not necessarily a Big West Tournament final this week, yeah. but you could meet them again. Right. No, and we understand that. Um, anytime we go up against Long Beach State, we think of it as, you know, this is, you know, possibly the championship match. This is where it all comes down to, and um, we really want to get that leg up mentally against them, you know, have that 1-0, have that W. But um, when we do go against them, I mean, the way we, amp we prep ourselves is every match we play, we say this is for Long Beach State. You know, we go against whoever, New Mexico or Tulane. Um, man, Long Beach State doesn't have a chance. We're doing great. Let's keep it going. You know, that's that's where we're at. That we always have that in the back of our heads. Now, do you feel Long Beach State has that same mentality in UC Irvine? Is is the history there enough that Long Beach State is thinking, oh, we've got to get UC Irvine? I think definitely they. Um, well, this year they are definitely shaking in their boots. Um, just how great we've done. I think the past couple of years in Big OS we've came in second, mm -hmm. and so they kind of see us maybe as like, oh, okay, well, we kind of just need to watch out for them. Well, 
not anymore. We're changing that. You know, we're going to be on top, and then they're just going to have to be. We're, we want the target on our back, and then they go for us. So we're trying to change that.